At the end of a test, the summary of the test data is displayed under the results tab in this manner. Now you can see various fields here. Some of these fields are editable, which means you can enter the information in those cells. Most of these fields are populated by the software at the end of the test. To look at which cells are editable, you can just click on edit here. And you can see here that there are five fields which are editable and that includes the nominal time, the nominal capacity, the temperature at which the test was done, the test current and the username. Let's go over all of these fields that are displayed here. The first field here shows us the date and time at which the test was started. This field here shows us the run time, so the time for which the test was run. This field shows us the paused time. Uh, so for example, if you're testing on lead acid batteries, as per the procedure, you're allowed to pause the test once for a certain duration. And in that duration, you can bypass any cells that may be approaching polarity reversal. Whenever you pause the test, a timer starts and the timer stops when the test is resumed and the total pause time is displayed um, in this section at the end of the test. Nominal time is the intended duration of the test. Measured capacity is test current times the run time. Nominal capacity is not the rated capacity of the battery. It is test current times the nominal time. Corrected capacity is calculated by applying a temperature correction factor to the measured capacity. The temperature correction factor is decided by the type of adjustment method selected and the temperature entered. The corrected capacity is then expressed as a percentage of the nominal capacity. This cell is where you enter the temperature. Test current is also entered by you the username as well. Then finally you see four different cells uh, for four different voltages. There's float voltage, open voltage, start voltage, end voltage. Let's go over what each of these uh, fields mean. So when you do the discharge test, uh, the sequence in which the test is started is you make all the connections with the charger connected to the battery bank and then you turn off the charger and then you start the test so because we we follow this sequence the torquil and the BVMs if used uh, are able to measure the uh, battery voltage in the float condition and then when the charger is turned off they measure the uh, open voltage of the battery bank and eventually when you start the test they obviously log the first reading when the when the test is started so float voltage is the last voltage reading logged by the torque before the charger is turned off open voltage is the last voltage reading recorded by the torque before the test is started and start voltage is obviously the the battery voltage recorded by the torque when the test is started the end voltage is the final voltage reading recorded by the battery. Uh, in this case, it is 42 volts and uh, a stop limit was set in this test uh, based on the battery voltage uh, and the battery voltage limit was set to the end voltage for the battery bank, which is 42 volts. So when the battery voltage reached 42 volts, the, st the test was stopped by the torque. Thank you for watching this technical support video from Megger.